one, 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 one. Welcome to the one on one, one on one. When it comes to ratings, man, we number one. I get the truth, truth, then I give them the scoop. If anybody got a question, I give them the proof. Welcome to the one on one. When it comes to ratings, man, we number one. I get the truth, truth, then I give them the scoop. If anybody got a question, I give them the proof. Welcome to one on one at Legacy Maker Sports Network. Hello everybody, Darrell Lawrence, Legacy Maker Sports Network, and we're bringing you another edition of one-on-one here on the Legacy Maker Sports Network. Now, we've been doing our season previews, and we've done uh, Richmond men and Richmond women over the last couple of weeks, and now we bring you VCU men, and we'll bring you VCU women soon here after. But today, we're going to bring you interviews with Coach Mike Rhodes, Senior Corey Douglas, and Junior Keyshawn Curry. Uh, This VCU team you know, struggled at the end of last year after starting off with 17 wins and only finishing with 18 overall wins going 18 and 13. Didn't get a chance to redeem themselves in the tournament. But this team, after talking to them and talking to these guys and talking to Coach Rhodes, you can tell that they're focused about growing this year and making things better than they were last year. Now we're going to take you over to our interview with Coach Rhodes, Corey Douglas, and Keyshawn Curry. I'm Darrell Lawrence, Legacy Maker Sports Network. Enjoy the interviews. Hello, everybody. Darrell Lawrence, Legacy Maker Sports Network. And we are here once again with another set of our, our season previews here in the 804. Uh, and today with me, I have one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet and one of the best coaches, uh, especially in our area, and in my opinion, across the country, not just tooting horns here. Coach Mike Rhodes from the VCU Rams men's basketball team. Coach Rhodes, how are you doing today, sir? I'm uh, doing great. How, how is everybody your way? Man, we're doing fine, you know, just sure. getting used to virtual learning. <laughs> yeah, uh, good luck with that. I, don't call me for help. So I, uh, I, left, uh, I left this morning and I had two – two kids sitting there doing their virtual learning and I'm like, wow, better them than me. That's for sure. Yeah. I think I'd be in trouble. (laughs) I think I'd be in trouble. My five-year-old is my, my girls are handling it a little bit better. You know, they're with them being 14 and 12, they're in better shape. You know, they've been experts. My five-year-old is is that attention span. He's just like, I walk past the room. He's like, dad, I'm like, no, son, you got to pay attention to school. (laughs) And I just, I just turned 48. And if I had to do that at 48, I'm not sure. I'm I'd be in sure. trouble. So I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm over Zoom meetings and virtual, all this stuff. And, yeah. and uh, I, I want to be around our guys and around our staff. And I want to see Ram Nation in the flesh. That's, that's where I'm at. I, I, I feel you, Coach. I, I know we're ready to get out there to catch y'all and, and, and watch the action, man. It's just crazy times. Hopefully, hopefully by November, we'll, we'll yeah. be in that spot. Uh, but, of course, here on 101, we have to start off with the check-in. So, just in general, Coach, how are you and your family doing? How have you handled COVID? Uh, just, you know, getting through all the crazy times. And since the last time we talked in, uh, six months ago, uh, right. you know, we've had, you know, social justice issues. You name it, everything has been going on. Just tell us how you and your family have been doing during these times. Thank you. No, we, we've, we've, been, doing, we've been doing very well. Um, you know, the, the one part of all this, the positive, I would say, or the, the, what you can see through the window is that, there's been a lot of family time um, and for a coach like myself and a lot of other coaches out there that there, you know, I, there are, uh, there's a lot of family time. There are times when you're on the road all the time and you're not home for, for breakfast or you're not home for dinner. I've the last six months, I've been home a lot with my kids and, and uh, that's been special. Uh, I'm not going to lie about it. That's been impressive uh, as as you know, being a part of a family, like we all want to be, and we all want to be present, uh, but your job takes you away from that. So I, I that part has been cool. Uh, the other part of it, the ba- not having the basketball, not having my players around, and and uh, not knowing what's going on with the calendar and the schedule, I've been that's been crazy. That's been been nuts. And then you add on to it, you know, dealing with some some of the illnesses with with families and players and their families and. And then the other side of it, of course, is, you know, the, how elevated the social injustice and, and the social climate, as I've, I've been phrasing it, um, has added to, to a tough six months, without a doubt. But I also think, as you know, 
And as people know me, uh, anything that you go through, you come out better. And um, it's it, nothing that uh, you got to grow. And so the last six months, I think me personally, I've grown a lot in a lot of different areas. But I also know I have to get better in a lot of other areas, too. And, and I can't wait to share that with our team and our staff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and with everything, it's just like you, you kind of hold your breath and hope that, um, you know, everybody will just kind of take here and we can get back to normalcy. I think we're getting yeah. there slowly. Uh, yep. You can definitely see, you know, this is getting better. We just get to see how the winter goes and hopefully we can uh, persevere yeah. through that. And now, Coach, uh, last season, you know, we'll get into that. You know, it's it, it was started off really good. Things didn't kind of go uh, the way you probably would have liked towards the end of the season, dealing with injuries and some other issues. Yeah. Uh, uh, but just tell us your recap of last season uh, and just give us your thoughts into last year. Yeah, you know, in my 24 years, it was, it was probably the craziest year I went through. And, and, and you know, you know, you, you all know me. I'm, I'm not going to make one excuse. You know, we, uh, we had high expectations. At one point in the year, we're 17 and 6, and everybody's talking about seeding in the NCAA tournament and who, who, who are our possibilities in March. And then the wheels fell off. And uh, I never went through a year where, I had so many guys miss practice because of illness, illnesses and injuries. And then at the end of the year, we, you know, a lot of our older guys and guys that are in the top six, seven of the rotation were out, a couple of guys out for the, the, the whole year and some guys not 100. And that, that really affected us. And then, you know, we, the bright spots, we had some young guys play, play really well down the stretch. But, of course, it was probably the – the toughest five, six game schedule in the A-10 at the end of the year for us when we weren't 100. And that, you know, no excuses. You still got to find a way to win. You still got to find a way to win at home, pull, pull a win off here or there. But it was just uh, not good enough. On top of that, um, what, you know, what I learned about it is, you know, making sure you don't take things for granted. Just because you're an older team or you are, you are, you know, picked to do this or do that. Nothing's given, nothing's guaranteed, and you got to go earn it. And even though we had some things out of our control, um, I wish our response would have been better. And, and that's something, you know, we're using right now to, to teach this young team how to respond and how to, how to you know, fight through result and have resolve against adversity. Well, I think that, you know, having those young players play uh, in that role in those tough games is definitely going to help you in the long run. You'll have yeah. an opportunity to, you know, when they come this year, they're like, well, we've seen that. We know, we know what we've been through, and I think that will help out in the long run. Uh, now, with that being said, you know, how's camp going so far? Uh, you know, um, I, I, has anybody impressed you that was like, wait a minute, I can't wait to see that young man on the floor. So how's camp going? Yeah, Who's that D, honestly, man, I, I, I'm, I've had so much fun coaching these guys. Now, it's been different because we, right. we had guys come in in the summer, but we didn't have our whole team. Um, you know, with with the coronavirus and and the way things were, you know, we didn't we weren't on the court with our guys for a while. Then the last two weeks of July, we got on the court with our guys. That was great. And then they got back here in August, late August. And then, you know, being smart and and strategic about it, we started getting back into it more and more. And you know, the last two weeks we've been really getting after it here. And just have I've had a blast with with these guys. I've had a lot of fun on the court. But we're young as can be, man. I mean, this is my, one, of, one of the youngest teams I've ever been around. But there's a lot of great pieces, and, and I'm excited to say that. Um, everybody I talk to or people that run into me, there's, man, you coach, you're really excited about this team. Yes, uh, we're all over the place right now with a young team. But the neat thing about it is I, I really – we got pieces to become a really good team. We got to stick together. We got to stay healthy, of course. Uh, but uh, – you know, uh, I would say uh, not not picking on the freshmen right now. We'll go with the returning players. I, I think Bones Highland and and Trey Clark have had really good uh, months of September here. Uh, Hassan Ward is bigger. He's gotten stronger. He is becoming more confident. He's making some plays that you're like, whoa. He made a play, a closeout yesterday on, on Bones Highland in, in, a, in a little bit of a live action segment. And he made a play that we don't have. A, we don't have other guys that can make that play just because of his length and athleticism, the way he moves. So, you know, really, I think uh, Keyshawn and Vince have really uh, had great off seasons here. I, I think they're in really good place. Uh, Vince has finally had an off season without a surgery, and 
His body looks really well. He's done a great job conditioning with Daniel Roos, our strength coach, and he's been playing really well. I'm excited to see those two guys step up in a leadership role. And like VCU, as you know, freshman and sophomore, you have a specific role, junior and senior. It's your team. It's their team now. So, And then Corey Douglas is healthy. He's been, he's been jumping around and, and being real active. And two years ago when he was healthy, he was a great anchor in our defense and, and gave us rim protection. I'm seeing that now from him again. So I want him to have a great last year of college basketball. And then Le the Levi Stocker, um, our, our uh, transfer, who's eligible from Kansas State, played for a great coach at Coach Weber. He's another anchor around the basket. He can really score, brings, a, brings an older presence to us, so, which is what we needed. And uh, he gets his work done. He's a great teammate. He knows how to talk to the young guys. So that there's been good pieces. I mean, I'm just seeing a lot of good pieces on that. We're just so young. We're just, we're, I'm not going to say immature. It's more inexperienced. But the two things that I really like right now, I think our guys work really hard and, and they really like each other. They really spend a lot of time around each other in the gym and, and off the court. And I think that carries over to, to uh, being successful. Uh, that's a good deal. That bond that they create together will go a long way, you know, during those tough stretches in the season when you need to come together. I, I, yes. I think that that's going to be a huge deal there for the team. And like I said, they may be young, but I, I think they're going to be they'll, be, they'll be in decent shape once the season gets. So I think at this point, man, people are going to be yearning for basketball. They will like, yeah. let's get on the floor. Yeah, Dean, <laughs> we're going to have, I mean, uh, we're going to have some growing pains with the young team, you know, and, and VCU teams have had that. Uh, but what's our growth? How, how are we getting better every day? Are we getting better every week? And is it showing up in, in live action? And I keep telling our guys, just keep, Keep hammering away. Keep hammering away, and that rock's going to break, and, 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 and it's going to break into something really good. And, and uh, you know, the biggest thing I, I always tell a young group, and I've been saying this, we can't get in our own way. And we, as we continue to mature and get more comfortable playing with each other and, and, and our roles, we'll, we'll get better, and we'll get better quicker. But don't get in your own way. And, and that's hard for young guys. I, I, that was my problem, and, and most, most young people – uh, stay out of your own way, keep listening, keep working, and good things are going to happen. Now, Coach, I heard uh, – I read an article where they said that you had an opportunity to, to teach some of your coaching methods with uh, Cleveland Browns head coach uh, Kevin Stefanski. Can you give us a little bit about the, the four H's? Yeah, it, you know, it's um, – when I was at Rice, um, I went to a coach's clinic at Texas A&M Corpus Christi with Will, uh, uh, Willis Wilson. He used to be the old coach at Rice. He was Brent Scott, our assistant coach. He was Brent's coach at Rice. And it was just a really good two days where, you know, coaches sit down and share their craft and share ideas. And I think it was Coach Wilson. I, I'm not positive, but I think he brought it up about team building stuff. And and this um, four H's, it's, it's you get up in front of your team and you talk about the four H's, your history, your hopes, your heartbreak, and your heroes and um it's, it's it's really intense but it's it's pretty awesome um if if i got you to you know get up in front of your teammates and and your and your peers because the coaches do it too and you tell everybody a little bit more and a little bit deeper about yourself than maybe your roommate doesn't know right right uh, i just think it brings everybody together and then it's amazing that Mike Rhodes from a white kid from Monte City, Pennsylvania, has some of the same thoughts and history or ideas as as Jamal Brunt that grew up in inner city Baltimore or Bones Highland that grew up in Wilmington, Delaware, or Vince Williams who grew up and 20 years younger than me from Toledo, Ohio. And like, wow, we, we aren't as different as we all think. We all have some of the same pats and our same heroes or, you know, I, I just think it's really neat. Um, and, and I've always shared it with guys. People always ask, say, hey, coach, your team seem to be very, very close. They look after each other. They're always together. And I take great pride in that, but you got to do things to create that. And this is one of the things that we do. And we usually do it on the road, four or five guys the night before a game. Uh, and sometimes we'll do it here over, over break when we have some, some more time together and there's no interference, but uh, I like that. And the other thing we do at 2 D is when um, we have alumni meet us sometimes on the road, David Hitton two years ago 
you know, of course, he's working in D.C. now. And he came to the hotel when we were playing GW. And he came in and he did the 4-H's with us. And here's a guy in the Secret Service. Here's a guy that played and played and put on a VC uniform and worked like you guys did. And here's a successful guy now in his in middle 20s, late 20s. And let's hear his 4-H's. And, man, they're pretty similar to the guys in the program. So I think it's really neat. I, I love that aspect. I mean, you – you can't beat that. I mean, and just being able to bond with somebody, like you said, that person may not know what you've been through. And then you yep. may be able to connect with that person on another level, a conversation that you may have not been able to start with that person. You're like, well, man, I never knew that, you know? Um, and I, I think that's amazing. I mean, that's, that's an amazing job, Coach. I, I, I really, really impressed by that. Uh, now, Coach, before we get off of here, the final thing I got to give to you Um you know, of course, 2020, the 2020-21 season is coming. We're hoping for the best here. Uh, but let me ask you this. What are your goals mostly? Or what do you want to see out of this group this year as you head into the 2021 season? Well, I, I want to see constant improvement. I mean, that's coach speak, of course, right? But I want to see constant improvement because we are so young. Let's get a little bit smarter every day. Let's, let's take care of the ball a little bit better every day. Let's keep sharing the ball. I, this the one – one high quality I like about this team is we have a lot of good passers. We have guys that really share the ball and that's hard to guard. Let's not stop doing that. Um, I think we have a lot, you know, we, we finally have a lot of size and multiple guys. We can play multiple ways. So we got to continue to keep getting better and, and sharpen our sword as I keep telling our guys, but we're going to play a tough schedule right away and we're going to have some adversity. How do we handle that adversity together? and continue to stay strong. But, you know, as, as the year goes on, keep getting better and then make, make, a, make, a, make a move and make a run. And, uh, you know, our guys are very confident, and I think they're a very competitive group, which is what you want to start with. Now we just got to put it all together and continue to get better. But I do like our pieces. I think basketball-wise, X and O's, D, is, is we got to really improve defensively with such young guys. I always say – Really good high school players. Not many of them play high level defense because they just want to ball out. Right, get right. It. <laughs> but if you want to be a championship team, we got to play defense, VCU defense. Uh, that I want us to see, and, and we're working on every day, and we're breaking it down and building it up. And and if we continue to improve and be able to play defense full court and then stop people in half court, uh, we're going to get better and better as we go along. And and I like this team. We just got to get older quick. Awesome. Awesome. And last coach, any message for Ram Nation before we get off? Yeah, you know what? I'm just telling everybody to keep continue to hang in there, wear that mask, social distance, take care of each other. And, you know, this social climate right now, um, you know, um, look yourself in the mirror and see how are you taking care of the people next to you? How are you people taking care of the people down the block from you? And, uh, you know, the best thing in life right now is you can take care of people around you. I believe it comes back to you tenfold. And, Let's 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 be better and let's do that. All right, everybody, you heard it here from my man, Coach Mike Rhodes of the VCU men's basketball team. Coach, good luck on the season. And everybody, thank you all all for tuning in to our Legacy Maker Sports Network uh, pre season previews. This is VCU men's uh, basketball team. Cannot wait for the season. Hello, everybody. Darrell Owens, Legacy Maker Sports Network. And we continue our one-on-one -on -one previews uh, here in the 804. Of course, you've all seen, uh, we've done our Richmond previews. Uh, we've talked to Coach Rose. And now we're talking to Corey Douglas, Red Shirt Senior. Corey, how you doing today, my man? I'm doing good. How you doing? Man, I'm, do I'm doing good, man. Just trying to survive during these crazy times, you know? Yep, yep. How are we all? <laughs> all right, right. So as we always do here on one-on-one, -on -one, we like to get start with the check-in. And so I want to check in on you and your family and, you know, just how y'all have been dealing with COVID and just going through all these crazy times, you know, with social injustice. It's been a wild ride these last six to seven months. And just want to see how you and your family are doing during these crazy times. Uh, I'd say we're all doing pretty good. Um, like you said, it's been, it's been a crazy couple months just dealing with COVID, getting adjusted to that. And then like, all the social injustice things that's going on just with um like here in Richmond and back home where I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, it's a lot of stuff going on. So like I've been in touch with my family a lot nonstop, just everybody checking in, making sure everybody's safe. Um just seeing how everybody's doing 
emotionally and mentally at it all the time. And just uh, just having a lot more talks just about what's going on and how we feel and what our thoughts about things. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. I mean, especially being from Louisville and just knowing what your hometown has been through, it, it has to be, it has to be just, has to be tough. Yeah, indeed. Like, it's it's, just, it's a lot of mixed emotions, a lot of mixed emotions. And that, the tension level, I can only imagine. Yeah. Now, of course, uh, you know, last season uh, was a a very probably, you know, difficult season in some forms. Started off really good, had a really tough last couple of games of the season. But, uh, you know, give us your thoughts on, on last season and, you know, um, what did you take from last season and, and what did you, you know, is there anything that you learned, anything that you grew from last season? Uh, like you said, last season was, was pretty tough. Just we started off so well and we had high hopes and everyone uh, expected us to do a lot of things and then we just really didn't live up to those expectations. Um, we had a rough patch at the end where we, we, we lost a couple games in a row. And uh, a lot of people wasn't used to that. It, we weren't used to it. And it was just hard. Um, we just kept trying to find a way to get back to what we were doing. And it was it was tough. Um, individually, it was, it was a struggle for me, just with my health in general, overall. Um, frustrating being there, not being able to play, not being able to contribute the way that I want to. So uh, I would say it was, it was kind of disappointing. But uh, at the end, it's a learn, life lesson, just learning from it. Um, Never really been hit with adversity like that. So now going forward, I've, I've, I've been in a situation like that before now. So if anything like that even gets close to it, I kind of have an idea about trying to end it early, you know, right. not allowing things to just pile on, build it's like a snowman effect, try to end things early or have a, have team meetings earlier or address issues that maybe like some, some things you think are small that could have just kind of just passed and then it just fix itself try to address those issues and just um, ultimately help me be a better leader as I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a leader of this team now and where I went from one of the guys that just was on the team. Now people are looking up to me and they come to me when there's a problem. So just learn from my mistakes and learn from the past. They definitely missed your energy. You know, you know, I, I felt like, you know, every game, you know, you're going to get one highlight play for Mr. Douglas and you always had that vibe. So missing that, you could definitely tell that was missed. Uh, you know, towards uh, the end of that season last year. Now, uh, you know, camp is getting started. You know, you're probably excited just to get back on the floor with with, the, with everything that's been going down. Uh, just tell us how camp is going so far. And, um, and you know, if that, just give us that one person that maybe so far has been shining during camp and you say to yourself, man, I can't wait to see that person on the floor this year. Uh, uh, camp right now, like, honestly, it's – it's great. Like, I love the vibe. Every time I come in the gym, like, it's, it's a big smile on everybody's face. You just feel the energy. Like, everybody's ready to go. But that, that's been since since June, even when it was voluntary, guys coming. Like, they could have stayed home. Guys chose to make that decision to come here and put in the work. And we've been here this whole entire time just bonding, getting to know each other, and just creating that vibe, that that brotherhood, that that, that bond right there. Like, it's really, it's really strong, and like uh, you, you can feel it when you come to the gym. If you if you get to see a practice or a workout or something, you feel the energy, and it's it's a great experience right now. Um, if I say like, I don't really know like if it's just one guy because it could be anybody that day, but like everybody's turned up, everybody's bringing right. energy. Like it just it, it's it's a crazy atmosphere right now, and I love it, especially like all these young guys like. They might not know exactly what's going on, but they playing hard. They they in there trying to learn. So that's all. I, that's all I can ask from them. You see, and that's the thing. You know, you now you, know, you spoke about it earlier. You're a leader on this team. You know, you lost a lot of key guys. Uh, you know, to graduation, and and, and now you're 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 one of those uh, leaders on this team. And so, as a as a leader on this team now, what do you want to uh, to bring on the leadership role to this team? Uh. As a leader, I just want the guys to know when they look to me that I got their back. Like, they don't ever have to look, worry about me folding or, like, I'm going to stand by them the whole entire way. Like, they're never going to have to question my, my work ethic, anything. I try to lead by example as much as I can um, just so guys know, like, he's the one – he's putting in the work. So, like, if he's going to do it, I'm going to follow right behind him. I'm going to do the same thing he's doing. Um, 
just if somebody's messing up, like I never try to be negative. I'm always bringing positive energy. Like everybody messes up, everybody makes mistakes. Right. So let's just get on to the next one, move on, and like, like, yeah, we, we're gonna acknowledge the mistake, but we ain't we're not gonna dwell on it. We're gonna move on and just get it right and fix it. Now, you know, with that being said, you know, like I said, being your senior year, you know, it's it's got to be a lot going through the mind. But you know, before we get off of this thing, my man, what goals? What are you? What are your biggest goals this year, personally and team wise, for this season? Uh, personally, I only got real, really one real goal, and that's just to, to play the game completely healthy, finish out this season. Like I feel like if I if I go out and I'm healthy and I have fun and just enjoy it, it's all gonna take care of itself. I'm gonna get whatever I want out of it. It'll all play out the way it's supposed to play out as a team. Just guys just learn as we go like it's gonna be it might be a little rough at the beginning just because we're young but i feel like if we keep our composure and keep staying at it we're gonna be a we're gonna definitely be a contender all right now everybody you're hearing it here from senior Corey douglas do you have a message for ram nation uh, ram nation i miss y'all can't wait to see y'all hopefully i don't know how it's gonna play out in the stew uh, how many fans we can have or if we're gonna have them but i hope to see y'all there all right, everybody, that's Corey Douglas, VCU Rams, the man, the hype man, as I like to call him, on the team. I'm Darrell Owens, Legacy Maker Sports Network. Until next time. Hello, everybody, Darrell Owens, Legacy Maker Sports Network, and we are continuing our one-on-ones as we continue our season previews of teams here in the 804. Now, of course, you know, we've already – knocked on the door at Richmond, but now we swing over to VCU to talk on the other side of town and head towards the stew, as someone would like to say. I got my man, yes, the, 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 the junior, Keyshawn Curry. Keyshawn, how you doing today, brother? I'm doing good. I can't really complain. I'm doing good. Good, good, good. You know, and the way we start this thing here on One on One is we always start off with the check-in. I just want to check in on you and your family, man, and see how things have been going during COVID. Uh, just, you know, uh, social injustice. It's been a wild seven months, man. And I know everybody's got just a lot on their mind. Election coming up in a couple of weeks. Just, you know, tell us how you and your family are doing. Uh, Family-wise, with health, I mean, we're doing good uh, with, you know, with the injustice and everything going on with the election and everything going on in different cities and different states. You know, we had, we've been having a lot of emotions, different emotions on the injustice and the equality of, of what's going on right now. So, Dealing with that, you know, just been a lot of wild emotions, a lot of wild thoughts, you know, just trying to figure out how we can make things better, how we can how we can help change and help move forward in, uh, in the world and in life today. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's crazy because you, I think you don't really, so I think sometimes you don't really realize how things are until it actually hits you. And then as you, yeah, you, know, yeah. we, you don't realize how much you value life until you start seeing, man, we got to wear a mask every day. Right. I mean, I'm like, yeah, I hear, you know, it's all, yeah, all that yeah, type exactly. of thing. You can't touch anybody. You got to be careful how you do this. You got to do that. Yeah. You know, it's just being so cautious. But um, I think for the most part, most people have handled it well. So in my opinion, but we still got, got some people out there. Come on, guys. Let's get this thing together. Yeah, we still got to get some people <laughs> in line with it and everything. But besides that, everything, we got a couple people we got to get in line. But they'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> now, let's talk a little bit about last season. The last season, obviously, started off phenomenally. A little bit of a tough go towards the end. Um, but just give us your thoughts on last season and what um, you learned from it, if, if anything. And, and, you know, just give us your thoughts on last season. Um, in the beginning of the last season, we definitely had our foot on the pedal. We definitely was going hard, winning a lot of games. And then I felt like, I mean, I, went, I feel like we kind of gave up, not gave up, but kind of let our foot off the pedal a little bit. And that, mm-hmm. that came to bite us, uh, you know, back when the season started to go along. It started to uh, bite us, the mistake that we was making, a little mistake that we thought wasn't important. Right. When we was winning all those games, just came and, you know, just came and found us in the crucial time. So some things I probably learned by last season, you just, you got to finish out the season. You just got to go hard all 32 games, all 32 games, however many games that you play. You you gotta you gotta go hard all those games. You can't let up. You can't let your foot off the pedal. You gotta stay in the driver's seat at the whole the whole time. Exactly. I mean, an execution and and I, I feel like you know it, it was such a great season last season and you know and and I, I you can just see the turn and I could just see yeah. guys were playing hard. It just 
it just wasn't formulated. It just wasn't going our way, yeah. yeah. It just wasn't going their way. But, uh, you know, things happen. But let's talk a little bit about, you know, this year. Obviously, with COVID, it took a while for y'all to get to camp. But y'all are in camp yeah. now. Things are rolling. Tell us how camp's going. And if while you're in camp, is there that one person that you're like, man, I can't wait to see this guy on the floor this year? Uh, man, can you give man. us any of that? Man, we got we, – we just got, like, five freshmen. We got a lot of good freshmen, a lot of good athletic – and freshmen that can play, like, can play right now, that can get right. on the floor right now and impact. Like, we don't got guys that we have to drag along. We got guys that once you tell them to do something, they're going to do it at their best ability. They're going to go out there and, and try to execute it as best as they can. And probably one of the guys that I can't wait to see the most is probably probably Jameer. He probably got one of the biggest upsides I've seen since I've been here when it comes to freshmen. 6'6", six, six, very athletic, can shoot the ball. But I'm really, I'm really ready to see all our freshmen play for real. They, they go hard every day. They've been working on their game every day. They look, they all look good. So I'm really, I'm really ready to see all of them play for real and play beside them and stuff like that. So what's the biggest part? What's the biggest part of the, your game that you worked on during this time? Uh, shooting the ball, shooting the ball. I've been working on all summer, just trying to shoot the ball at a high clip, at a high rate. Trying to shoot the ball in high 40s this season bring up my percentage and shooting the ball, free throws, threes, mid ranges, just, just just trying to get my shot way more consistent than it than uh it could have been last season. Right. You know, I ain't I ain't shoot a very good percentage last season. So I'm really focused on shooting high forties uh this season. Now you enter your junior year, um as we talked about before, uh, you know, you come in as one of the leaders on this team now. I mean you you think about it, you got a lot of freshmen, a lot of a lot of underclassmen there. And, uh, you know, now that you're a leader on this team, you know, what type of things do you want to bring as a leader on this team? Uh, I, I just want to be as, as vocal as I can, uh, try to help the guys as much as I can, try to give them all the information that I know, you know, just to let them absorb what I know so they can be better than me, you know, when I'm gone from here in two years. So basically just be vocal, lead by example, and try to do the, all the right things so they never question what I'm doing. So now, you know, and, and that's and that's a big deal. I think, you know, some people get lost in it where you get an opportunity to to groom that second that second that next wave of Rams. Yeah. And so I and that's a good deal. That's a good mindset to have going into this season. And I think with especially with them, you know, with the team being a, a little bit younger, uh, I think that's gonna really help them down the road. It'll help y'all in general. Yeah, no, nah, definitely it's gonna help them have that that older mindset. Like, when we get in tough games, they're not going to think like a freshman, like a 17-year-old, an 18-year-old, a 19-year-old. They're going to be thinking like a, a junior, like a senior. So that's kind of one of my main focus, just to get their mindset on a level, not even my level, but higher than my level, just to elevate them higher than I am now. So when it comes to late games, when we playing like Dayton and teams where we need to stop or we need to we need to execute on offense, mm -hmm. they, they be prepared for that. Yeah, that's, and I, I can't. I just my personal feelings. I cannot wait to see uh, Ram, the Rams on the floor this season. Now, uh, of course, uh, before we get off of this bad boy, once we do, truly appreciate you coming on, my man. But I, I, I appreciate have to, you having me. Yeah, of course, man. Of course, and I gotta have. I gotta know a couple things. One, uh, your personal goals and team goals for this year, and then do you have a message for Ram Nation? Uh, one of my personal goals this year. <sighs> The, I'm I'm really focused on being a defensive stopper this year. I really wanna I really wanna uh up my game on the defensive the defensive side of the ball and be one of the defensive one of the best defensive uh players in our conference this year. So that's one of my uh main goals. One of our team goals is just to be better than we was last year. You know, not have that drop off that we had last year, just to have a, a uprising year the whole year. And one 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 message for Ram Nation, we coming. We not we not taking nothing. We coming. We want all smoke. That's they, hey, there you go. Guess what? You heard it here. Keyshawn and the Rams, they want the smoke. All smoke. <laughs> we want all smoke. All right, everybody. This is my man Keyshawn Curry of uh the VCU Rams Jr. Uh Keyshawn, thank you for coming on, my man, and good luck no this problem. season. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right, everybody. I'm Darrell Lawrence, Legacy Maker Sports Network. This has been our one-on-one -on -one previews of the VCU men's basketball team. Until next time. One, 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 one.
one, 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 one. Welcome to the one on one, one on one. When, when it comes to ratings, man, we number one. We number one. I get the truth, truth. Then I give them the scoop. Hey. If anybody got a question, I give them the proof. Hey. 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 Welcome to the 